Hi there, this is Gordon with Let's Go Travel Tips. And today I'd like to tell you a little bit about the gear, the camera gear and equipment that I like to take, especially when cruising and in Alaska or other places that have this kind of beautiful scenery. The first camera I wanna talk about tonight is our PowerShot SX70HS. This is a 20 megapixel camera and it's an all around just great camera because it takes great photos and 4K video. It has a zoom that just is incredible. It starts at a wide angle of about 20 millimeters, but it goes into over 1300 millimeters so that when you're a few miles offshore, you can zoom in and get up close and personal with those penguins. The other thing I like about it now, but in order to get that close and have a good steady shot, I use this monopod and this extends out so you can have it on the floor or have it shored up on the balcony or rail or whatever, but it helps so that it stabilizes it so you get a good clean shot. It has a viewfinder, but it also has this handy screen that folds out. You can watch, look at it from the back, but if you're going to be shooting video of yourself, you can turn it so you can see what it is that you're going to look at. So this really is just an all around good camera. The rest of this video, in fact, will be taken on this camera. Okay, I just finished talking about our Canon power shot, which now the rest of this video will be shot on. And I talked about the monopod, which I really like again for stabilizing far off shots. But we also have a tripod. This one I got from Amazon. It's very lightweight. It extends out quite a few feet. So you can put your camera on it and take some really good long range shots and still have wonderful resolution. There's other tripods that I have. This little guy is really handy for using your action camera and wrapping it around on the railing of the ship on your balcony. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's also good for holding if you want to do selfies and such like that. In fact, I got this brand new one and this one I plan to use with the power shot in order to do a lot of our YouTube video. So it's got a grip, but it also extends out, so it's a tripod. This one was only about $6 at Walmart. It's Vivitar. Now, I want to go to some of the best cameras that we've had. We've had these for 6, 8, 10 years. These are Canon EOS digital SLR cameras. This one's mine. It's got a zoom telephoto lens and I zoom for 75 to 300 millimeter so we can get in up close with the glaciers and wildlife and have some really good shots. It does photo and it does video. It's automatic or you can do a lot of, a lot of different settings. On the photo safari that we talked about, that we took in Juno, in fact, he talked about how to set the f-stops and the shutter speed and the aperture just right so you could get really good shots of the whales as they were surfacing and diving, as well as when we were in the rainforest, you could get some beautiful shots that my wife took. This is her camera. And she usually uses the standard 18 to 55 zoom. So she does a lot of the more up close stuff. Whereas I do the zoom stuff of what's further away. <clears throat> We're both using the EOS cameras. And again, we've had these for quite a few years. Now, one concern with these, and we have interchangeable lenses. If you take the lens off, you want to make sure and not ever touch the mirror that's inside of here. Because if you do, you're gonna have fingerprints on every single photo that you take. When you do change lenses, you wanna make sure you look at that. And we found this handy brush with air that you can blow out dust. You don't wanna to touch the back of your lens with it and scratch it, but you're able to get any dust that may have settled in there. So that is something you want to make sure and be aware of. The other thing is on this camera, on the end of the lens, I've got a skylight filter. Now this is just a standard 
filter that you can get at any camera store, Amazon or what have, well, even Walmart, this protects the end of your lens. <clears throat> if you, if it gets scratched, you can replace that filter for just a few dollars instead of having to worry about the actual lens getting scratched. So that is something I highly recommend. Moving on, I want to talk about action cameras. I've had a number of action cameras over the years. The first one I bought probably six or seven years ago. This I bought on Amazon probably cost me $50. It came originally with a case and I really like it. I've been able to use it underwater and such. The case is now broken, so I use this more as a dash cam. So this is a handy little camera for that. Also, with this suction cup mount, I can put this on the glass of the balcony, and I can take a long half hour or hour of sail away video. Alaska is beautiful you're going to want to see it again and again. And this allows you to do that. That's where this one comes in to where you can just, if the glass on the balcony may be tinted blue, so you don't want to shoot through the glass, but you can use this one and wrap it around the railing so that then you're above the glass and you get a nice clear shot. My other action camera that I've had for a few years is this GoPro Hero that my son got me for Christmas about six years ago. This is a fun little one. <clears throat> the best part about it is the headband. Now, <clears throat> I can put on a ski cap and I can have my camera here and when you turn it on and off, it has beeps so you know which how many beeps based on what you're gonna be doing, shooting, turning it on, turning it off, and so on. This is just fun because you're able to get shots and still take photos with your normal cameras. I've had people, when I'm wearing a ski cap, come up and wonder, where did you get the hat with the camera on it? So it's kind of a geeky thing, but it's a lot of fun. Now, I was a little worried, though. The battery on this only lasts about a half hour, and I have had times when I've planned on taking a beautiful shot on a boat ride, and the battery had died, and I didn't know that. So today, I bought a new toy. I got the GoPro Hero 9. Now this one has interchangeable batteries. Each battery lasts up to two hours. This case in and of itself is waterproof. It has screens on the front and the back, so you, I can use it for doing any YouTube videoing with it, any selfies, any pictures of other people. This will also mount on my headband, so I plan to use this one on our boat ride that we talked about, where we're gonna be out there for a few hours. So I'm really excited to try this one out. I'll have more information on this after we've done that. But like I said, it's got a couple of batteries, so I'm looking for some, some good video. Now, this is an indispensable tool when it comes to your action cameras. This is a little wrench that I got on Amazon, came with a whole bunch of other stuff that I bought that go with these action cameras, the brackets and so on. But this will make it so that you can really tighten down so that you're not worried about your camera moving too much or falling down. So very indispensable little item this point, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and that will help us so that we can bring you more content. We love making these videos. We're having just a really good time doing this. But if you want to be able to see them, if you subscribe and turn on that notification bell, you'll be able to know when we put up new videos. One of the newest toys I got when we went on a cruise to Antarctica last year was this 360 degree camera. It's actually two lenses on either side of the camera and it stitches it together so that it gives you a full 360 degree view of, what you're, of where you are. It has this nice selfie stick that comes with it and as it stitches it together, that selfie stick actually disappears. You can't take a drone on a cruise ship, but if you use this and have it extended and hold it way up high, it's unobtrusive. 
and it can make it look like you have taken drone video. I will put a link down below that shows you some video that we took when we were in Charlotte Bay, Antarctica. Absolutely mo one of the most beautiful places I have ever been on this God-given earth. And this allowed me to capture that for the, abil for the ability that I can now go back and I can look at that beautiful location. With all of these cameras that I have, I have to make sure I have enough places to put them. I'll put all the images and video that I've taken. So I've got this handy little card holder that I found on Amazon, and it holds probably about 20 SD cards and micro SD cards. And I have 16 gigabyte cards, I have 32 gigabyte cards, 64 gigabyte cards, and 128 gigabyte cards. I probably have enough cards here to last me quite a few trips without even taking stuff, everything off. But I like to have extra. So I've made sure that I've got enough here that if one of these fails, and they do fail, so these do fail. So make sure you have good cards. <clears throat> Along with the, and, and I did some figuring on those SD cards. On a 32 gigabyte card, which goes in my action camera, I can get about five hours of action camera video. On my digital SLR camera, with a 128 gigabyte card, I can get 12,000 pictures. That's a lot of pictures. So here's a rule of thumb. For about every picture that you take in a JPEG format, it's going to take one to two megabytes. For every hour of medium resolution video, it's going to take about six gigabytes and about twice that for a high res video. Those are some good rules of thumb to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out where you're going to have, uh, how many SD cards you're going to have to have. Along with that, is backup, backup, and backup. You can never have <clears throat> enough backup for all this wonderful photos and video that you're going to be taking on this trip. I have a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. This is from Amazon, about $50. I have a two terabyte thumb drive. This was about $40 from Amazon. This one came today. I'm still going to be testing it before I take it. It's on this nice little Alaska keychain that I bought the last time we were there. But I want to make sure that I have backup, backup, and more backup. And I'm taking my laptop, so I'm also going to be backing stuff up on the it. This handy little adapter has USB on one end an iPhone on the other end, as well as an SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. On this one, I can copy off of my SD card and micro SD card either onto my iPhone or onto my laptop. So this is a really handy little one. Also, with the power issue, you're going to want some sort of a power strip. We found this one that's really handy for in the stateroom. So it has three plugs for standard power, and it also has three USB plugs. So that all these batteries that I've got for everything, I can plug in and make sure that everything's charging, as well as my phone and anything else that might be using USB. You only have a couple of plugs when it comes to what they give you in the stateroom on a cruise ship. So this is indispensable because you want to be able to have enough places to plug everything in so that you're not losing power. <clears throat> Along with power and everything else, I've also found a lot of the little bags that work out well. This one's from Ikea. I usually put the action cameras in it. I found these ones from TJ Maxx. I've nested a few. These are see-through so that you can see what it is that you've put in them. I've got different ones that I just use for different things and I never really know what I, each time it's different. I also have a battery, a backup battery. 
This way I can charge my phone or maybe some of my batteries. This will hold enough charge to charge your phone back up after you've had some, if you lose power while you're out and about. So it's always good to have that as well. If you're going to be flying to the cruise port like we are, you might want to have some headphones for on the, on the airplane. <clears throat> These are just some standard headphones I got at Walmart. Standard mini plug so that you can plug into the, the seat so you can watch a movie. But I also have an adapter so that I can plug this into my iPhone. And then I can listen to music if I want to on it. On the iPhone, I have just a standard iPhone XR that I have from work. It's not the fanciest one, but it's good. It's got just a single camera on it, but I'm able to take photos, video, anytime, anywhere with this. Got to have the case on this so if it drops, you don't bang it. Got to have a screen protector on the front because I have had times when it's cracked and you don't want to have that and these will keep it from happening. I also use this little ring on the back. I'm always afraid of dropping it. And so this gives me a way that I can make sure that I hold it without having to drop it. On your phones, iPhones, whatever the smartphone is that you happen to have, you want to make sure that you've checked with your carrier as to what service is available as you cruise. You may need to put your phone into airplane mode because if you don't, it may pick up the cellular service that's available on the ship, but that will give you roaming charges. Also, while you're cruising along just outside of Canada, it might pick up their cell towers. If you have international coverage, that's okay. But if you don't, then you don't want to be paying international charges. When we get to the ports in Alaska, it's not going to be an issue. Those are American ports. Your carrier, if it's an American carrier, won't give you any, any problems. If you signed up for Wi-Fi on the cruise ship or when you're in port, if you find free Wi-Fi, you can also make phone calls such as FaceTime video because that goes over the wireless. Not something to worry about. Now, very simple, not high tech, no power involved, just some binoculars. You got to have these. When we're going to be by those glaciers, you're going to want to see what's on the glaciers. When we're going up the channels, you're going to want to see the wildlife. Just a good pair of binoculars so that you can really see what it is that we're there to see when we're in Alaska. I hope that I've been able to help you know what equipment to take when you go cruising because you want to be able to remember taking good pictures and good video. We hope you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. We're so excited to meet some of you as we cruise. So happy that you've joined us. And you just take good care and God bless you.